my great grandmother was actually was psychic, but because of the time period, they thought she was a witch. They weren't kind. Let's begin by looking at your birthday. You were born on December the 21st, 1997. The sun in Sagittarius tells me that you love to travel and probably consult with different people of different cultures. The reason why I say that is because Jupiter rules Sagittarius and Jupiter is the planet of foreign culture, foreign land, law, philosophy. Mm -hmm. Would you say that any of this resonates with you? For sure. I've always been itchy. Like I've always, like even as a kid, I was born and raised in um, South Carolina and I always wanted to, I was so ready to get out, I was so ready to leave. I always got really excited when my parents would take me on vacation or like my dad would take me on work trips. I resonate with the philosopher. I'm always like on a, like in a rabbit hole on like discussion threads or like reading about things that I <laughs> have no like understanding of, but I'm trying to. So yes, I do. I resonate with that very, very wholeheartedly. Let's move on to the next chart. Your latest film, Glass Onion, premiered on September the 10th of 2022. You can see transit Jupiter and Aries in your seventh house, which would indicate good luck and one-to-one -one partnerships and also business contracts as well. In what ways do you associate good luck with working on this particular movie? Well, I think it was good luck that I booked it. No. Yeah. <laughs> the whole experience, like shooting to press, and even now I think um, I've just felt so lucky to be a part of that Love cast, that. yeah. Your character Whiskey yes. in Glass Onion, we have the chart here. Whiskey was born on this date, mm -hmm. May the 9th of 1998. She's younger than I am. <laughs> Wait, I didn't know that. She looks kind of evenly dispersed. Her midheaven is in Gemini. Gemini. Mm. What does Gemini rule for midheaven? Mercury rules Gemini just just like Virgo. Okay. And so when you have a midheaven in Gemini, you're probably gonna do a career where you're speaking, Communication. Uh, communications career, social media, you might be an influencer. That is so funny because she's an influencer and she's she an wants influencer. to be a politician. Wow, they probably knew. I really need <laughs> to ask Ryan about this. If you look at the star chart, you can see that you were going through a nodal return. The North Node represents your destiny, mm -hmm. your purpose in this lifetime. It's when you go into the South Node, that's past lives if you believe in that sort of stuff. I do. Yeah, so the, your south node represents your past life. So you were aligned with this particular role for sure. It was actually destined for you. So really, yeah. instead of stressing out in the audition process, <laughs> I should have just found out her birthday and come to you. I'm gonna do that. Yes. I'm gonna do that next time. Yes. The other thing I see here is that Saturn and Venus were transiting the sign of Aries in your seventh house. Saturn and Aries represents working hard mm -hmm. and taking action. Venus is resources, mm -hmm. Venus and Aries. It's about me mm -hmm. and what I need to do. And, yes. and maybe the character was a little selfish in the how she was doing things. 1,000% she had an agenda. Yeah, she had an agenda. She knew what she was doing. <laughs> Whiskey's smart. She knows what to do. Do you feel that this is accurate about yes. whiskey? Okay. Absolutely. You said Venus was in yep. was assets, like Yeah, it rules your assets, possessions, money. It's the money house, the second house. Whiskey knows how to use her assets. <laughs> and her beauty, Venus. <laughs> uh-huh. Venusian. Yeah. Venusian, all the way. Wow. <laughs> that is so funny. Whiskey is truly an astrology girly. <laughs> she yes. really is. Let's move on to the next chart. Today. So we have the today chart, February the 9th of 2023 here. Mm -hmm. The chart shows that transit Mercury will be in your fourth house. Transit Pluto is conjunct your natal Neptune placement in the fourth house of home, family, and foundation. And so this is indicating to me that there could be some sort of confusion surrounding home life that is bringing you to a spiritual and transformative place in your life at this time. What in your home life is changing? Since I moved to LA, I haven't really stayed in one place for longer than a year and I've been here for about six years now. I think it's kind of more or less the same, like trying a little bit of restlessness and trying to figure out where home feels like. And especially because I'm moving around so much, it, it does feel like like physical roots are never always quite planted. Right. Because then like once it feels like they're planted, I get restless again and I'm ready to ready to go. Do you feel like a little bit confused about where you should go or where you should lay your roots? I know it's in the general vicinity of Los Angeles. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, uh, you know, do I want to, do I want to stay here? Should I like 
move closer to the city, like, you know, like, yeah. you know, because I'm a little bit further out. Maybe that's what that is. Yeah, yeah. It sounds like the Neptune energy, the transit Pluto yeah. planet on your natal Neptune, and Neptune also rules like confusion and illusion. Mm -hmm. But not too confused. Not too confused. Yeah. Let's look at another chart. Your show, Outer Banks, first premiered on April the 15th of 2020. If you look at the star chart, you can see the transit north node in Cancer is in an almost exact conjunction to your midheaven. This aspect speaks to a destined new direction in career and professional life. Does it feel like Outer Banks was a part of your destiny? I, I always thought Outer Banks felt very serendipitous because it is shot in my hometown. But I think we all agree that there was something really, really special about it, especially the first season. So yeah, I think I feel like that makes sense. What else do you hope becomes a part of your legacy, both in the past and in the future? Hmm. You know, it's a funny word. I, I've never really thought about legacy. I want my kids to look back one day and be like, oh, mom was hot. <laughs> 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 or she maybe not was. I, I still want to be present to it. Like, I want them to, <laughs> I want them to, to feel that way. I want to, I want to be a cool mom. But I think beyond, like, family, I want um, people to look at what, you know, what, what I've done. And, you know, like, damn, she tried. She, she tried really hard. Yeah. You know, she did, she did good. I would like to look back and be proud of myself. Love that. Yeah, never thought of that. Yeah. So let's take a look into the future, five years from today, on February the 9th of 2028. You can see transit Saturn conjunct your natal Saturn in the seventh house of partnerships and marriage. This indicates to me, definitely, you're gonna find a long-term partner, maybe like a marriage partner. Do you see yourself settling down in five years? Oh, five years, I don't know. I think I need more time. <laughs> I don't know, but maybe, I guess, oh shoot, I guess by that time I'll be 30, which is still young. But yeah, I don't know. I definitely want to have kids one day and I know my biological clock would be ticking. Maybe also maybe I'll adopt, I'm not sure. I still feel like I have a lot to do. Yeah. I don't know if five years is enough for me to yeah. achieve all of that before I get some of at least some of that restless energy out. If not settling down, then what do you hope to accomplish by then? I've always dreamed of being able to tell stories and I think I'm, I'm really, really lucky to be able to do that in my career. Like this was always like a dream. It would have felt greedy if I like had asked for like everything that's surrounding me. So I feel really lucky and I just wanna keep doing it. Yeah. And I, I want to keep working and, and I feel so lucky to be part of Glass Onion and Outer Banks and I want to keep working on really cool films. I want to look back at some point in the future when I'm ready to settle down and be like, okay, I'm proud. Maybe we can open a new chapter or another book and still be reading this book simultaneously. <laughs> I, love that. I will not sit still. <laughs> Can we go back to my chart, my birthday? Sure. So you said the south node yes. is past lives. Okay, so you want to know about your south node in Pisces here. And so you having your south node at 13 degrees, we see that 13 degrees is in the second deacon ruled by the moon. So this also tells me too that in a past life, you were very nurturing and very spiritual. Mm. Pisces South No is someone that in a past life was a very spiritual person. They may have been a shaman. Mm -hmm. They may have been a person who uh, helped people. This is saying to me in a past life, you were a person who sacrificed yourself to help people, to be of service to others. And you took action on that. And you did it in a way that was very intuitive. You likely probably met people and intuitively you were like, I feel like I known this person mm. or I wanna help this person because emotionally I feel there's a connection there. Yeah. So does any of that resonate? Do you feel intuitive, psychic sometimes? I feel like one of my love languages for anyone is acts of service, like I, even just like little things. And that's how my dad is. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of hidden emotion. Yeah. So expressing emotion, yeah, I think even not just by nature, but maybe by nurture was never really like, we never really were super emotional outwardly, like we would save that. And I do sometimes feel very intuitive. And I've had like crazy deja vu moments. When I was younger, I met one of my friends in a dream before I actually met her in person, which was really um, crazy. I remember her telling me in that dream about her home life that she ended up telling me about later on in person. My great grandmother was actually, was psychic, but because of the time period, they thought she was a witch. 
they weren't kind. So yeah, I, I do feel I do feel very intuitive and in tune sometimes, and then other times I don't. Yeah. <laughs> um, it comes and goes. It's not something that I feel like I feel all the time, but when I do, I think it's really interesting. I've also had some really funny um, spiritual encounters before, but never any scary ones. Just yeah. like kind of quirky. Yeah, I get that. Like if there's a ghost, they have a sense of humor. Yeah, yeah. I think. <laughs>